Hi everyone. One of my viewers left a comment um, and asked me to compare my turquoise uh, watercolors and the cobalts, cobalt blues as well, those that are um, more kind of the lighter color. And I will do those separately, but today I wanted to um, share the turquoise watch colors with you. So I went through my swatch book and I realized that I have four true turquoise colors and one is actually, I decided to include it, although it's not a typical watercolor that we know. So these are the Kuretake Gansai Tambi watercolors, which are designed for a completely different use. They're meant to be used on rice paper and with a, a Japanese calligraphy um, watercolor brush. So, you know, I don't have the expertise in that, but I do have them as watercolors and I like to use them more for crafting rather than the classic watercoloring. So um, I decided to include it in case some of you are interested. So um, I have three artist grade brands here, watercolor brands. So the first one is Schminke uh, Horadam. Then we have two colors actually by uh, Nevska Palitra or White Knights. And then finally it's Mijalo and Kuretaki. So let's start by um, looking just at these pigments right here. And so the first one I have is Schminke Helio Turquoise. As per usual with Schminke, while the watercolor was still wet, it was quite bright and intense. And then as it um, dries, it becomes a lot smoother. So compared to the other um, swatches, you can see how the color is smooth um, but um, by smooth I mean gradual sort of it doesn't have these kind of uh, blooming effects although it might have been that I used a little bit more water with the other watercolors however I tried to do it in the same manner um, so it is however the lightest or the least vibrant color out of all of them. By itself it's still quite vibrant but when you compare it to others you um, well I can see that uh, it's not as bright. So um, let's look at the transparency. So it is transparent in fact all of them are transparent except for um, I'll talk about Kuretake separately because it has no information. So um, all of these four watercolors are transparent. In terms of staining, um, this color is, uh, it says it's a staining color and there is no information for the white knights azure blue and turquoise blue on the staining part and the Magello peacock blue is semi-staining. Let's look at the light fastness. So, Schminke is three out of five stars according to their uh, light fast rating, which is not ASTM, and it is uh, light fast. Then the both of these, the azure blue and the turquoise blue by White Knights, they both have three out of three stars, which means high light fast. And it is also five out of five stars. So this is all um, brands own light fast testing. And so is Schminke. So none of them are ASTM tested. Five out of five stars, which is extremely light fast, but basically the same as these because these only go up to three stars and these go up to five. So five out of five or three out of three basically is the highest light fast watercolor out of their uh, range. So um, then let's look at the pigments and it, what was interesting for me to find out and I actually didn't know that, the only single pigment is PB16, but all of these three watercolors are the exact the same pigment uh, combination. So it is PB15 colon three, 
and PG7 is pigment green. So it's got a green pigment in all three of those. They are different, although the azure blue is quite similar to peacock blue, uh, but peacock blue, blue is still on a bluer side. So in terms of intensity, they are equally intense, these three super super vibrant uh, I would say that the turquoise blue is more of on a green side and then I would put azure blue in terms of the um, order of going towards from green towards the blue I would put it in the middle of turquoise blue and peacock blue and finally peacock blue being the bluest turquoise out of the three if that makes sense I hope it makes sense so the greenest then in the middle um, sort of instead of like a you wouldn't say it's uh, a blue blue it definitely has some green in there but it's not as green as this um, so in the middle and then finally the bluest is this one beautifully transparent as I just said so you can see the black line very clearly there is no problem at all so very pretty colors um, I'm surprised that it's called this uh, that white knights call this color turquoise blue because uh, even if I isolate this color and just look at it on its own without these colors uh, next to it it still looks green so the eye still picks up on the green and if I show you uh, this color on the swatch you can see the same thing so this is the Arches Rough uh, 300 GSM paper this is the azure blue and this is the turquoise blue you can clearly see that it's actually within the greens uh, at the bottom here after the blues and it's definitely uh, like a deep deep turquoise green color so but that was the um, uh, name choice and finally um, oh yeah so in case you're interested this paper that I've done these swatches on is a I purchased it on Jackson's Art and it's meant to be the extra rough uh, I think own brand but when I received the paper block it doesn't have any information on there at all so I can't tell you for sure um, the, or the, the exact details of it and I tried to look it up online and I couldn't find it so all I know that uh, when I was ordering it it was supposed to be their own brand and it's supposed to be extra rough and 300 GSM that's all I know it's got beautiful texture the final one which is really um, quite different as I just said um, is the Kuretake Genzai Tambi. So this color is cobalt blue, although it is called cobalt blue, it is typically a lot uh, darker uh, than uh, the typical cobalt blue that we would associate it with. Um, so this is the number 62 in the palette and there is no information on light fastness and transparency staining and all of that um, so I have no idea and I guess that is because these colors or these watercolors um, are not the typical watercolor that we know there is no information that I can provide you with but it does seem to be transparent from looking at it um, there is not much I can tell you more about it because like I said you know um, I have no idea how this color would do in terms of keeping its uh, vibrancy over time and it it would be uh, it is a great color on its own not as interesting as the others here purely because I love the watercolor effect um, but it is a great color very vibrant very true turquoisey more um, probably the bluest out of all of them and yeah so you can still use it obviously in your uh, journals and all of that so that's not a problem at all mm -hmm. so as the uh, light was not permitting I couldn't finish that video on the same day so I am now um, doing it on a on the next day so hence why maybe you're uh, queasing why my nail polish is a different color so, so today we're going to look at a few different things so um, we already have looked at the swatches but today as you can see I have added some um, 
yellow watercolors so every of those brands has their own lemon yellow in uh, those palettes so and all of them are py3 pigments except for kuretake as we don't know um, and i'm going to mix and see what green i would get out of it i'll assume a very uh, luminous green so I'm going to do um, three different things, uh, wet on dry, wet on wet, and mixing the um, turquoise colors with the lemon yellows. Okay, so let's start. So I'm going to start with Schmincke. And that um, the paper I'm using um, this time is the reverse side of the Moulin de Roy smooth paper because it has some nice texture to it. This is way too smooth for me. I feel like the brush is just gliding over it and I, I don't get the control that I like to get um, of that feeling on a little bit of a texture. So Moulin de Roy on the reverse side and it's the 300 GSM, although it's very uh, floppy and flimsy for a 300 gsm compared to my other um, papers okay so wet on wet so, so i always have to rearrange things uh, for the shrinker palette because it's just way too um too chunky so here is my lemon yellow Uh, it's Schmincke Horodam, in case you're just tuning in. So I'm going to take it out and add a little bit of water just to make it nice and smooth. And we're going to go in and hopefully, maybe I'll zoom in slightly so you can see a little bit better. So this is dry paper. Okay, so I was concentrating on the yellow and realized that in fact it's the turquoise that I need to do. So, oh gosh, what am I going to do now? Let me put the uh, Helios turquoise on here and see what we can get and mix it on the paper like so. So we get this um, color which is similar to a phthalo green. It is right here. Okay. So basically let's imagine that uh, this was the third one. Sorry about that. But we're going now to continue with wet and wet and the third window here I will do as I was intending to do the first one got a bit carried away so it happens so I've got I'm going to wet the paper like so and then just drop in the Helios purple for us to see how the color disperse is it's quite beautiful i love this little um, veining that's happening here it's very very pretty so and now i'm going to do um, wet on dry so because it's quite intense color uh, I'm going to mix it up a little bit with water. It's a very pretty color. I'm going to go in from the other side and do a little bit. Okay, so that's Schmincke Helio Turquoise. 